All right, hi everyone. This is a game, or rather, the only game feature on stream with my Siphon Kit deck. This is the very final match of the entire tournament. Top cut, uh, the final battle between first and second place. This is the second match. I just came off after beating Brandon, who is on the right, um, with my Quad deck, and now I'm up against his legendary New Angela Soul. Now, um. Spoiler alert here, this game was a loss for me, even though I did get one chance earlier on to have a go at it. I did meet against him in the winner's bracket finals and uh, unfortunately I did not manage to win against his soul. I did learn a few things about his deck but it wasn't enough to secure me the victory. So his first turn was okay, he had a couple of ice which was very good but he didn't find his current. Now his second turn allows him to um, play targeted marketing for SMC. Even though this was a two-day event, I am very I'm we were I mean I was very tired, so um, I was playing very stupidly. Here you see me playing an SMC to account siphon, which is usually okay, but I forgot about the possibility of news hound, which just completely wrecked my day because it forfeited the siphon. There was no way I could break it, so I had to pay for the trace and end the run. Um, I could get through any other piece of ice. I could get Sai Sai out for Archangel. Toe move would be a pain, but it would still be breakable. Um, the one piece of ice I didn't want to see was News Hound. And this is why News Hound is so good. You need so much capital just to get the Artman 4 to get through the News Hounds for the rest of the game. You need 2 to install the Artman, assuming you have Kate's discount. You need 4 to pump the Artman, 2 to break the News Hound, and another two to crack the SMC for it, so it's just really expensive. Notice also that I did play the SMC through the targeted marketing. I figured I was not going to be able to play the game without the SMC, so I uh, caved in immediately and just gave him the 10 credits. Lady comes out, and now I run his remote, uh, trying to uh, go against his, I mean trying to contest his scoring remote because I know he does run Astro scripts and breaking news, and I don't want either of them to hit me. So, um, first thing is an Archangel. I knew that if at any point he res a news hound, I was kinda done for. So at this point, I'm thinking, I can't actually break the Archangel with SMC into Sai Sai. This is a disaster. Already it's a disaster. Because I installed the lady, I actually need six, seven credits to, um, tutor the Cyber Cypher and break the Archangel, but I only had six credits. So, the Archangel fires and my lady bounces back into my hand. So this is possibly one of the worst possible starts I could ask for for that final game. I really really should have taken my time especially because this was an untimed match. But I don't know, I was just very flustered and the Siphon SMC into... The failed Siphon to the News Hound really just... Uh, tilted me quite a bit. On the, good, on the bright side, my opponent seemed to have also uh, made some quite a big misstep. He accidentally drew two cards instead of one for his mandatory draw. So he was forced to um, use his first click to perform a draw. This meant that he couldn't double advance the breaking news followed by any shenanigans that he wanted to. So he just got the breaking news regularly and the game goes on. So both of us were just really uh, in a pretty messed up state. <laughs> yeah, not gonna lie. But this just took me completely aback. Three installs, including one in a remote. What is this remote shell game? What am I supposed to expect? Are there snares? There probably aren't. I kind of know his influence. He's running a couple of blue level clearances and a couple of sand sands, I guess. At this point, I'm guessing. He only actually runs one sand sand, but um, I figured that he had multiple sand sands in the deck. He obviously ran Astro Scripts. I don't really know much else about influence, but I suspect there are archive there's an archive memories in there somewhere. It's probably a uh, pretty similar to those sync lists that you see out there, except that it's uh, in a different ID. So at this point, I do have my Proko, I do have my daily cast. What I do not want is a breaking news on the table that kills my Proko. That much I know. Um, so I begin checking his remotes and there's a Jackson. The Jackson immediately gets trashed. I believe I trash it here. It would be very stupid not to. And I continue drawing with Proko, and then discarding cards, hoping that there isn't a breaking news on the table. My hand so far isn't very good. 
There's a bunch of R&D digs and there's an Artman that was in there since turn 1. There's an Artman in my hand. I just couldn't find the time to install it. Or the money rather. The money is more important. So pitching the diesel turns out to be a mistake because there was a breaking news buried there and it burned off my broker. So this is just getting from bad to worse. I don't know how tilted I am by this point. All I do know is I have two same old things in my hand, but I have no way to play the account siphon. So right now what I'm doing is just clicking for credits because Timmy Wong clicks for credits. And eventually once I have enough credits, I can install that Artman 4 from my hand and play account siphon. Except that now that's not possible either because he's icing out HQ. This is a disaster of a game. <laughs> this really is. This doesn't accurately represent what my kid deck can do. Sadly, this is just uh, a one hell of a mess. Well, um, at this point, I'm kind of done. Even though there are no Astro Script score on my opponent's side, there's no way I'm getting to any server, and my economy is kind of crippled. I don't have any Proco to take away with, and there isn't Hyperdriver either. The hyperdrivers are necessary to get me up to speed against yellow, and they have just haven't been showing up. Even if they do, I do not have an astrolabe to fit that in memory with the SMC, and I definitely need the SMC because the game has progressed to almost a mid-game at this point, and I'm still breakerless. Just an SMC on the board with a couple credits. That is very, very weak. Right now, I'm just calculating the cost of getting to HQ because I feel like Siphon is my only out at this point. But that's not a very good out. So I draw the hyperdriver. And at this point, I realize that if I want to get back into the game, I need to get that hyperdrive on the table. 5 memory is a problem, so I'll look, instead of trashing the SMC here, I'm, I'll look to crack it for something useful. Knowing that my only out is probably that account siphon from the same old thing, I'm probably wanting to siege HQ here. So I'm going to crack SMC for something to get me into HQ. Um, it's not going to be a lady, because I already have a lady in my hand. So the next most logical thing would be a size eye. It's cheap. Unfortunately, it means that I have to commit one size eye to a server, and you never want to commit it to HQ, especially because there are no res code gates on HQ. In fact, placing the size eye on the remote might be a smarter decision, considering that uh, I know that he probably doesn't run biotic labor. He might be. I'm not very sure. But either way, I'm gonna crack it for the cyber cipher on the HQ, because I don't think I can get into the remote anyway. I'm still deciding here. I, I really cannot decide. It's a very close call. Sai Sai on the remote is definitely something that you can see as being more useful. But I need to be able to get the siphon off to snowball. If I can get the siphon off, he cannot raise any big eyes like Toe Wolf on the remote, which helps me a lot anyways. And then I get a hyperdrive on the table. You bet I'm going to use it next turn. No Poco with the hyperdriver sadly, but uh, you've got to take what you, what you have. And a 7 click turn is definitely something that I need to bring me back into this game. So now the game uh, progresses and my opponent has seen quite a lot of ice. No Astros yet. If he, if there was an Astro, you bet he would score one by now. But he hasn't found an Astro yet. He has found basically everything else, including a news, another news hound on R&D. So that's just really, really obnoxious for me. And again, because of this hyperdriver play, having to crack the SMC for Cyber Cypher, I'm down to very few credits. Uh, for those of you wondering, I usually use poker chips here, but uh, Brandon uh, requested that I use normal credits instead because he cannot keep track of poker chips. So poker chips will be used for everything except for normal credits. I'm using my red poker chips here to keep track of the 7 click turn, uh, during which I'm probably just going to draw a bunch. Find a lady. Uh, lady finds its way onto the table. So this is one good thing about uh, NBN, you can usually just uh, <clears throat> install a fractal and a decoder and you can bust your way through most servers. Not against New Angela Sol. With the news house you have you need that strength force entry breaker as well. Now uh something fishy happened here. Basically what happened this game was after he scored the first breaking news, he retargeted Tama onto Cerberus Lady. However, he didn't play a second copy of it from his archives or from his hand. So when he tried to claim his 10 credits from, from me playing the lady at this point, the judge came over and ruled that because there was no targeted marketing in the bin and um, there had been no Jackson Howards used, I trashed the first one. 
it meant that there couldn't have possibly been a retarget of targeted marketing, so he should not have gotten the 10 credits. I believe the second copy of Tama was in his hand, but he failed to play it, so um, the ruling was made that he couldn't gain his 10 credits, which was really helpful because now he's only on 2 credits instead of 10. So, at this point, usually against most other, deck, other decks, when your opponent's at 2 credits, this is the prime time to go indexing or Maker's Eye with a Sai Sai or Lady. But you can't do that against uh, Sol because of Mew's Hound. So I'm going to run this suspicious remote that he hasn't res or used. And that's possibly the worst card I could have hit. The Palooza basically means that he's going to mid-seasons me. And the 5 extra credits means that I can no longer run any other servers without worrying about uh, big ice. Potentially threatening a big problem. So this is all kinds of bad and I cannot even beat the mid-season trace. So he gets to fire his targeted marketing uh, for real Z's and now I have to decide whether I want to beat the uh, mid-season trace, which I try to. I basically click for credits for the rest of my hyperdriver turn but it didn't matter anyway because he had a whole bunch of money in his hand. There's a hedge fund and now he's well clear. Another hedge fund. Uh, this is easy mid-seasons right here. The only question is how much money does he want to dump into it. At this point, no matter how much he traces it, I'm probably going to um, tag flow at this point. Knowing that I'm running account siphon, knowing that the proco is gone, I might as well just tag float. My K deck is better positioned to tag float than most others because I can run with, without resources. It's very sluggish without. But if I can keep the siphon spam, I think tag floating is okay. If you think about it, tag floating isn't the worst deal in the world, is it? Sure, I get a whole bunch of tags and a single psychographics could potentially win him the game. Barring that, however, um, it's very difficult for him to make use of those tags if he's poor and Siphon keeps him poor. He cannot rest inf uh, information overload, he cannot play Scotch Turf, not that I, I suspect that there's no flatline in his deck, but yeah, basically a lot of the tag threats require the corp to have money. I know you're screaming at your screens, there's exchange of information. And that is probably the only thing I need to worry about this game. EOI is a problem card and he has two agenda scored. But if I can lock down his remote, because he doesn't have an Astro, he won't be able to win off exchange of information. So long as I don't let him score another agenda, EOI does nothing. It slows down my game, but it doesn't not, uh, do much. So I finally, finally find my Artman at this point. Or rather find the money to get the Artman out. And now the... Um, and now I pass over my turn. Basically what I did there was click for a bunch of credits and play the Artman. Knowing that he mid-season on his last click, he might find the time to close accounts me this turn. If he plays a close accounts, I do not want to have a whole bunch of money on me gone to waste. So I might as well dump them into an Artman 4 uh, before anything else happens. So clearly at this point my opponent does not have a close accounts. Instead exchanges his breaking news for my Palooza. Again, this is fine, he cannot win off this. I am completely fine with EOI. <clears throat> Even if I steal a food at a later point and he swaps it, he's not going to win. I just need to make sure he doesn't find his final breaking news. He might be running 3 copies in his deck, and he is. And now it, um, siphoning him looks like a very tempting option. I'm just considering all my options at this point. What ice would probably stop me? And the answer is a toll booth, except that he cannot raise a toll booth. An Archangel would be bad. Archangel would be the worst because it forces me to pay into the Archangel without getting the siphon off because he has 4 credits, he can dump all that money into raising an Archangel. So I did, I don't think siphoning here is the correct play. But what do I do? If I don't siphon, I have to hit R&D. I still need to try to win the game somehow. So the indexing in my hand or the Maker's Eye in my hand, both are looking like very tasty options. I do not have a decoder on R&D, so that is a very big problem. At this point, I cannot afford to face check an Archangel. Um, yeah, I cannot afford to face check an Archangel. Because um, if I fail to beat the Archangel Trace, I'm going to have Artman 4 bounce and that is too much of a tempo hit. So thankfully there's not an Archangel on HQ, it's a lowly wrap round which I easily break with Lady, leaving me with 3 counters on Lady. And news hound. Here I'm thinking of whether to break one or two subroutines. I'm breaking one subroutine here and allowing him to fire the trace. The most important thing here is not to gain money from the siphon, it's to deny my opponent from having any money. 
with the denial, I can now run R&D with impunity. I still have to worry about resistor, but thankfully, because I've selected my ID to be K, I do have that one link making uh, re tracing through resistor that much easier. And I know that he cannot boost the trace because he's on zero credits. Unfortunately, his R&D is pretty well fortified with double pop-up window. So again, he has very, 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 very annoying ice that cost so cheap to res and are so effective. Pop-ups, resistors, wrap rounds, news hounds. Ugh. And the worst thing is the maker's eye whiffed. I knew I couldn't go for an indexing that turn. Not because there was a Jackson on the table, but because I couldn't afford to run through R&D twice. Um, firstly, of course, I don't have enough clicks, but even if I did, um, I wouldn't be able to pay into two resistors. So an indexing would be pretty bad. That is why I went for the Maker's Eye, and I think it was worth it. Unfortunately, his deck didn't think so. I didn't find a single agenda, and I really, really needed to. So at this point, I don't know if he has agendas in his hand. What I do know is I cannot afford to go into his hand. With a, I believe I have a scavenge in the bin, so I cannot. I have to be prudent with my lady counter usage, and that means not running HQ frivolously. Item goes in the remote. Do I contest it? Do I? What is it? The worst thing is I can't go for an indexing here. I even though I know that R&D is clear of resistors, the fact that I didn't re res a resistor on R&D means that there are none on R&D. Which is my biggest fear. Three credits is the worst, having to pay into three, uh, resistor. Possibly more if he bumps the trace. But what I'm worried about is a Jackson Howard in the remote. That is a distinct possibility. So at this point, I'm drawing up, trying to find more solutions, perhaps a sure gamble. But no, no, no headway in the form of economy, so I'm just going to click for credits instead and hope that's not an astral. It isn't. So at this point, I really should have figured that he has no agendas in hand. If he did, he would be scoring one right, right now. Alright, instead he goes for more eyes on the remote and clicks for a couple of credits. So now I have 7 credits which is a bit more palatable. 7 credits means that I can more safely actually index him, him this turn. The only problem again is that if the remote is a Jackson Howard, the indexing is a waste. So I go for the maker's eye. Makes sense huh? Alright, so it's the news hound that's the outermost ice that will cost me 4 credits now to get through, actually 3 credits to get through the R&D. The tag trace is irrelevant at this point, I'm floating tags to oblivion. Again, he can't do anything with my now 15 or so tags. And it turns out it is a Jackson Howard in the remote, which he uses. So um, that was a very good decision, decision by me not to go for the indexing. <clears throat> because I knew that there was not much... Not many possible cards that could be in the remote. Jackson Howard probably was it if it wasn't an Astro. So he reshuffles in most notably another Jackson and an exchange. So I should expect exchanges to be appearing very soon. <clears throat> so at this point, I'm just waiting for him to get enough credits for me to siphon. It's not worth it siphoning at this point because he only is on 3 credits. But I do have the same old siphon ready to go. So that is something I'm looking to do if he ever plays a hedge fund on Sweet Squeak. I finally find an agenda and it's not what I wanted to see. So basically, in our previous match, um, where I play against, where was, I play against his soul, I did not see any global foods in his deck. <laughs> the game somehow ended with only Astros and Paloozas and Breaking Newsers in the score area. So I didn't actually think he was running full on exchange food. But now that I know that, the game drastically changes. He inserts something new into a remote, and at this point, I, um, it's quite hard to say if that's an agenda or not. If it were an agenda, surely, surely he would have tried to score it last turn. And so I don't think it is. In my mind, it's a Sand Sand City Grid. And he loses 5 credits. Um, I, I have to think it's a Sand Sand City Grid here because I did see it last game. And I was quite sure that he would place it in the remote not to score agendas, but to duck the siphons. He wasn't able to duck the siphon that time because he was on exactly 5 credits, not one more. So I just said, okay, so that's probably a sand sand, but I still need to check it anyway. I really cannot afford it to be an astro script. I know that um, I did perform a maker's eye, so he wouldn't have top decked any agendas, but um, yeah, it's very unlikely that that's an agenda in the remote, given that he didn't try to score one the turn earlier, and the fact that I've locked up R&D. So when I saw the resistor on the remote, I just bounced off. And then he quickly took 3 credits to end his turn. So that was a bit 
flag in my opinion. I really should have figured out that, uh, judging based on his actions, that he had a very clear uh, line to victory, a very clear plan of what he was going to do. And the extra eyes on the remote should have telegraphed that as well. He probably would have placed the resistor on HQ if he really wanted to win the game any other way. The fact that he placed it on the remote meant that there was something very important in that that he wanted to guard and I really should have gone for it. I just looked at the remote and said 3 to pay the resistor trace, 5 to pay the archangel trace. If that really is a sense at the base of the remote, I'm done for. I'm on very few credits, I can't see she centrals anymore. So I had to let the remote go and then I index him, thinking that it's probably not a Jackson. If it is, tough luck, but at least I force it out. So here comes the indexing and I think it whiffs. I do see one exchange of information which I immediately bury to the bottom along with the Jackson Howard. So seeing the extra Jackson Howard in the, in the indexing makes me know that it's very unlikely that that's a Jackson Howard in the remote itself. Alright, so that completely whiffed. And this is just going to stay as it is. And at this point I think I'm just going to take more credits. Or draw cards. I'm not sure what I'm drawing for here at this point, but I did draw into a sure gamble and that is always a welcome sight. So my opponent draws up and swiftly, decisively scores the Astro script. So that was if I didn't make enough mistakes this game. This was probably the back-breaking mistake. So one of the best counters to EOI is to simply ensure that your opponent doesn't score three agendas. If they don't have three agendas in their score area, they cannot swap C's for food all day. But now that he has found the Astro, not only can he swap for my global food, but he can also score a Bill or another Astro from hand. So at this point, I'm basically forced to check his R&D, uh, check his HQ twice, sweep it to ensure that there are no agendas in there. Um, <clears throat> because I know that there are no agendas coming off R&D from indexing, I know that he has no agendas. Either that or I missed the agendas in hand and would have lost anyway. So at this point, uh, my task is to basically lock down R&D. I have no other option. The remote is dead to me, HQ is dead to me because I have no more lady counters. What I need to do now is to siege R&D as hard as I humanly can. This is not a good, pl I mean this is not the best for me, but at least my opponent doesn't realize that I don't have any more account siphons. That's another reason why I just went all out on HQ, because I have no more same old things or account siphons remaining, unless I drew them with some luck. All I did have was the final indexing in my hand that you can see, which I'm going to use very shortly. Because he drew through most of my indexing from the first run, um, I did not want him to see the exchange of information or the Jackson Howard, so I went in for the indexing, trying to bury the exchange of information further down in his deck, maybe give me a bit of hope. If there are two agendas on R&D, I immediately win. But there aren't, there's only one agenda I believe. It's a global food, and there are two exchange of informations, a Jackson Howard, that was the fourth card from the final, from the past indexing. So that was possibly one of the worst possible indexings I could have seen. So. Both exchanges are the bottom two cards, followed by the Jackson Howard. The top card is the Global Food, which I'm going to fetch soon. Now the Global Food does put me at 5 points, which is not enough to activate that notoriety in my hand. Not that it would have mattered, because I did not have any barrier breakers. So I'm in a very very tough position right now, and I'm head flooded to all hell. But he plays the blue level, so I start counting. He mandatorily drew his first card, the blue level draws him cards number 2 and 3. Or rather, he mandatorily, he mandatorily drew the second card because the first card was a food. And then the blue level drew him cards number 3 and 4, which was number 4 was the exchange and number 5 was another exchange. So the moment he realized that he could swap something for the food, he won the game and that was GG. All in all, that was a very terrible game for me. A lot, a lot of misplays from turn 1 till the end. Um, but, that's the way it is. When facing up against such an unknown deck, I just completely crumble. If I had known his deck this card for card, I would have played better. But in any case, it was a very, very good match and well played by my opponent. Congrats to Brandon once again for winning this regionals. It was very well deserved with a very unorthodox solo deck. I think that was a beauty. 
or rather <laughs> a complete nightmare to run against but it was a beauty from the side of the board and I really appreciate that. So that's a uh, demonstration of my Siphon Kate deck. It still has options even though you're locked out of HQ, even if you're locked out by the, of the remote by resistors, you can still make some things happen. And it was close but it wasn't enough. Thanks for watching Happy Net Running. Goodbye.